So today I want to talk about the online left. I want to talk about the cynicism and infighting that I've seen come out of a lot of online leftist spaces. And I want to do this not by calling out a specific individual or group, but by addressing the trends that I've noticed within our movements. Now, I don't think it's beneficial to call out an individual or a group, because all that does is make it about personalities and makes it about the individual in question or the group in question, rather than talking about the issues behind what is going on. It becomes a clash of personalities rather than a discussion of what we need to be talking about. So with that said, I want to just remind people of where our goal as leftists should be as far as I'm concerned. I think anybody who identifies as a leftist either has firsthand experience or has witnessed enough atrocities or enough wrong within our current systems that they have been moved to the left, that they've seen either their own personal plight and story, the story of family members, or maybe just enough stories within the way capitalism functions and the state functions in order to convince people that this system is not working. And because of these perspectives, we've realized and come to the conclusion that the current system is flawed to a point where it needs to be reformed and changed, or it needs to be altered on a grand scale. And we've all found our own individual ways to analyze our current system and reality to try to create a better world and a better tomorrow. From all the different leftist perspectives out there, we must believe that our systems and our ways of thinking are, by necessity, the best way to improve the material conditions of people, to create a better tomorrow, a world in which people do not have to worry about hunger, where they do not have to worry about housing, where they don't have to worry if they get sick and need medicine, where people aren't choosing between food and rent and medicine and having to make these hard decisions that capitalism puts us through, where we're not working ourselves to the bone and to the point of exhaustion in the search for our daily bread, as it were. Now, in this understanding of leftist thought, where we're trying to improve the material conditions, we all agree, for the most part, that our own individual understandings and ways of thinking are the best way to achieve these end goals. But the point is, we're not there. And the majority of people, especially in a place like the United States, don't even think that destroying capitalism is necessarily the best way to attain that. A lot of people still believe that reforming the system will work in the end goal. Now, while we all assume and agree that this will not work from leftist perspectives, we have to acknowledge this reality that the revolution isn't coming tomorrow, that we're not at a place as a society where we can just seize the means of production and create this better reality and world. So I question how much cynicism towards our politicians and cynicism towards certain liberal perspectives are towards achieving our end goals. What I think we should be doing as a movement is trying to convince people that are in that liberal mindset that their perspective is indeed flawed and that capitalism and the state represent the larger issues that will keep perpetuating the cycle of oppression that we're dealing with, that it's not enough to just put a band-aid and patchwork on these systems, that we need to actually shift away from them. But until then, is it so bad to praise small victories where we try to clean up water supplies, where we try to make the certain conditions of people's lives better were by improving infrastructure or seeking a system where we are able to handle the influx of our problems a little bit better, maybe improving a minimum wage or other such things. And any politician or person who's advocating for that within our system, yes, we should look at them with scrutiny and question them and question whether or not they will be on our side in the long end goal you know, realization of a system that is more leftist than capitalism. But should we throw them out and call them disingenuous because they're working within the system of oppression that we're in, and they're actively making people's lives ever so slightly better? Yes, they are small gains, and yes, they are not enough. But should we throw out all of the good that is being done in the name of the perfect? And this is a problem I've seen within the online left online left, excuse me, where we are 
constantly calling everybody the worst names possible and saying that they have thrown themselves into the corporate neoliberal system for every small little bit of infighting that they have within your own leftist ideology. And it's a problem. I think it's a huge problem because even someone like AOC is negotiating the oppressions that we all exist in as well as anybody else would. If you've ever worked under a boss, if you've ever worked within the system, you've probably been asked to do something that has been scummy at best or downright inappropriate at worst. And in order to sustain yourself and your family, maybe you've done some things that you question the ethics of, whether that be using food that's, uh, you know, in your restaurant job that maybe isn't the most, you know, clean or good. You know, a lot of restaurants reuse things that you're probably not supposed to reuse. A lot of businesses will try to, you know, control their capital gains and make sure they gain as much money and profit as possible by doing some scummy and unethical things. And in this process, we as the workers negotiating our own daily business have to choose whether or not our own food and our own safety is worth that. This is a reality that we live in. And for someone like AOC, who's a politician with progressive policies, she may not be the socialist or anarchist dream that we want her to be, but she's doing good. She's doing good at the end of the day. And I think that as long as we're seeing a progressive push where these politicians are raising the voice of the problems within capitalism and are trying to improve the material conditions of people on the ground, we need to be supporting this. And that means we're going to be negotiating part of our ethics. That means we're going to be negotiating the reality that we want because the reality we want is not necessarily feasible right this minute. We can still advocate to liberals and to others to say, hey, this system isn't working and here's why the system will keep repeating on itself while we still advocate for infrastructure reform, while we still advocate for a higher minimum wage, while we still advocate for healthcare for all, even if we don't get the system that is preferred and best for us. We can do the good without taking the full perfect. And hope, hopefully over time, more and more people start to see that these cracks keep forming, that the issues of infrastructure keep happening, that the system as it is with billionaires making money off of the backs of workers isn't going to be productive for anyone. And that at the end of the day, some form of leftist thought is going to be the best thing for our society, not just within the United States, but within the entire globe. That a lot of these issues are not just national issues, but international issues in which we have exploited the labor of people across the globe. Until we reach that point, all we can do is try to improve people's lives. There's no reason why we have to have people working 60 to 80 hours a week and if we do actively find a way to get people to get down to like 40 and 20 hours a week again, wouldn't that be mean that more people have time to perform mutual aid, to get to know their neighbors, to get to explore some of these understandings and theories and systems and come at it from a place not of desperation, but as a place of learning and education and desiring to learn more about how we can improve lives? That's the place we need to be in. And so I question anybody who comes at any sort of reform with purely cynical eyes, because it's not helping. It's not helping when we have a system that is actively trying to reduce the amount of people of color who can vote, where systemic racism is a problem across the board. And the reason that is an issue is because people within more conservative circles and Republican circles know that if they do that and get away with it, that they'll be able to dominate the narrative and we will move even further right into more neoliberal and fascist positions than what we're already in. The neoliberal perspectives dominate as it is right now, and we need to start shifting that further left. And the way we're going to do that is by using a combination of mutual aid, dual power, and electoralism, actual electoralism, where a democratically elected person is done without the financial campaigning of you know, huge political donors, where we as individuals get politicians who come to our events and where we create the block party and we create the scenario where we're all working together for the same end goals, where our protest rallies and the politicians' goals are one and the same. And until we reach that point, we are not actively going 
to create any sort of change. We are just going to sit there arguing on Twitter and not actively getting anything done. At least that's how I see it. Now, I need to talk about some of the infighting as well. There's been an issue around edginess within our movement, within our positions and perspectives. And some of that edginess has bordered on really problematic positions. And this is something that I think we need to remember as we're moving forward. If we're talking about a world in which we're trying to improve material conditions for people, and we're trying to deal with the hierarchies inherent in society, we have to remember that the issue is not just one of capitalism and class. It's an intersectional issue of race and, um, and sex and gender identity and everything else. We are going, and you know, ableism especially within our own thought processes and understandings, we need to address these positions and talk about them as if they are just as important as the class consciousness. And in doing so, that is going to mean having inclusive language. That's going to mean having people feeling like they can be a part of the movement. That we're not just throwing the people who are already at the fringes of our movements to the side to make room for people who are already comfortable in society. There's too many cases that I've seen where women, where trans people, where people of color, especially black people, are pushed to the side and have their voices removed by largely cis, straight, white men. Or maybe not straight, but cis white men for sure. And even within that framework and spectrum, cis men who are straight have a tendency to dominate our spaces. And this isn't just in the online spaces, but in reality as well. The amount of times that I, as a woman have experienced forms of sexism within leftist circles and understandings, not just online, but in, within real life, is a real issue of concern to me. Because if we're just perpetuating the same understandings of hierarchies, then we're not addressing and fixing our position as leftists. And by framing our perspective as a purely class one, or by saying that we are willing to throw certain perspectives under the bus and not accept that it is the position of people moving further left to correct their language and to hear how they are stepping on other people's voices, we are doing a disservice to the left. In fact, we are just recreating the same systems of hierarchy and oppression and giving it a more leftist tone, which is just going to make people like myself, as well as many people of color, feel like this isn't their movement. This is going to make people feel like they don't belong to these leftist spaces. And they need to, because it needs to be an inclusive movement. It needs to be a space where we all feel like we have a voice, and where we're not getting hit with this form of edginess that ends up hurting other people within our movement. Now, are there some people who maybe take it to an extreme level where they have an expectation of perfection? Sure. That happens within any movement. It's the same type of cynicism that I described before. But there's a balancing act there. There's a way where we can come at this in a way that allows us to be aware of all these issues and call people in and make sure that we are addressing ourselves as a movement that wants to see people's material conditions grow and be better. Not just a small sample set, not just a few voices, but where all of our voices can lead this movement in a direction where we feel safe to do so. Until we reach that point, we're going to keep fighting like this. We're going to keep questioning ourselves, and we're going to keep ending up in a place where we don't actively move anything to the left. We need to remember, on the one hand, that the good cannot be um, sorry, that the perfect cannot be the enemy of the good, but at the same time, we can't alienate people out of our spaces who belong there, not just because of, you know, abstract, you know, positions of observing the problems of capitalism, but by the necessity of our realities, where we are put on the back burner and forced to be progressive because of the realities we live in, because of the realities that we grew up in, because of our own experiences. You can't use edginess as a position where we're going to hurt people within our own movement and feel safe about it when people are hearing the same jokes thrown out time and time again that they heard from right-wing people, that they heard from very fascist understandings of the world, and they're being recycled in leftist spaces, you might understand why some people are uncomfortable with that. 
And without addressing that, that's going to be a problem and it's going to keep causing voices to feel silenced. So with that said, let's try to remember as we move forward that we need to start taking steps in the right direction. That we need to start remembering that people need to have their voices not trampled upon. That in the leftist spaces, there's room for all of us. And at the end of the day, our goal is to improve people's lives first and foremost. And we should be actively doing that and praising anything that does that, even if they are small gains, even if they are small victories. We need the time also to remember to take those time for victories. Because a constant defeatism and feeling that we're losing every single battle is exhausting. It's exhausting because we're never going to reach our end goals if we keep exhausting ourselves in this way. Take a moment, celebrate, and let's have a moment where we remember that we're moving in the right direction in certain areas. Celebrate those victories, call out the failures, and try to do better. That's all we can ask ourselves. We're only human, and we're always going to be flawed. With that said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and bell for notifications. You can follow me on Twitter and check out my Discord in the description down below. My name is Anarchist Tara, and I hope you enjoyed watching.